Fantasy Basketball is back, which means I finally have something to look forward to. So because of this, I'm going to guide you through the point guard selection of the 23-24 NBA season with my top 25 point guards for Yahoo, using the projection stats from FantasyPros.com. Now, there are some general rules to follow when selecting any player for Fantasy Basketball, and I'm going to be using a few of these ratings for point guards. Now, some of these are going to be universal, but definitely for point guards are what we're going to be focusing on today. Number one, team role. Are they number one option? Will they get a lot of touches? For a point guard, are they pass first or they shoot first? Number two, are they very injury prone? Like, do they have a history of being injured? Is the team going to sit them if they start going for the playoffs? Or are they going to have the Kawhi Leonard factor? Number three, position availability. Do they play just point guard or are they available for other options as well? And for my list, I'm going to be giving you the player, the average selection where they've been going in Yahoo, as well as the round. Then I'm going to give you the tier of each player and which round I would select them at, their pros and cons, and their projections for the upcoming season. The list is big, so let's enjoy this ride as we miss the exit. At number one, I have Luka Doncic in my S tier. Pros, he does everything well, and he's going to have the ball every time he comes down the court. Cons are going to be if Kyrie is going to be taking shots from him. Plus, he only plays point guard only. Projected stats are 31, 9, and 8. Also in S tier is SGA. His pros are that he does everything incredibly well, and the team is supposed to be competing this year, plus he's a point guard and shooting guard. The con is that Chet might be taking some shots from him, but this might help him with the assists, probably going to be averaging 31, 5, and 6. To start off my A tier, I have Trey Young. He's going to be the go-to guy in Atlanta, and he's going to be having the ball in his hand almost all the time. The con is that Murray's going to be taking some shots away from him, and Trey can also be a little bit streaky, sometimes be a pro, but he's also a point guard only. Also in A tier is Donovan Mitchell, as he has great stats and he can be a point guard and shooting guard. The con is that he hasn't played 70 plus games since 2019 and most of his teammates also need the ball as well. To finish off A tier, I actually have John Moran. The pro is that he's only going to be missing the beginning of the season and he's an absolute beast in fantasy in a bunch of stats. And most leagues forget about him. The con is that he's going to be missing the first 25 games and he's a point guard only. He's supposed to be getting about 25, 6, and 8 this year. To start off my A- tier, I have Steph Curry here, and he's still putting up a lot of great stats. He's a point guard and a shooting guard. The con is that he hasn't played 70 plus games since the 16-17 season, and Chris Paul is going to be taking touches away from him. His projection is to be about 28-5-6. and six. Next is, hear me out, Jordan Poole. He's going to be the go-to guy on the Wizards. He's a point guard and a shooting guard. The con is that he hasn't really been tested yet in this role, and he's projected to get about 26-3-5. I think he'll get a little bit more than that. Next in A- is LaMelo Ball, who's putting up great stats, and he's going to be the go-to guy in Charlotte, and he has the green light to do whatever he wants in Charlotte. Plus, he's a point guard and shooting guard. Con is that he's coming off an injury, and we don't know what's going to happen if they start to fail down in Charlotte. He's projected to be about 23, 6, and 8. Up next is Halliburton, who I'm a big fan of, and he fills up the stats, and he's a great all-around guy, and he's a point guard and a shooting guard. Problem is, he's made of glass, and Matherin may take shots from him but that could give him a couple of assists per games. Al Burns is projected to get about 21, 4, and 10. Up next in A- is Irving. Now he's going to fill up the stats in his usual way. He's been pretty consistent all these years. Plus he's point guard and shooting guard. Con is, he hasn't played more than 70 plus games since the 17 season. And he's going to be projected to get about 26, 5, and 5. Up now is De'Aaron Fox, who's going to be putting up great stats. He's quite reliable and he's on a fast-paced team. Some of the cons are that some of the other younger players are starting to step up and that could be taking some stats from him. And he's only a point guard. His 23-24 projection is supposed to be about 25, 4, and 6. Also, we have Brunson, who's really the number one guy in New York, and he's always going to be there every night. The con is that other guards can take minutes from him for longevity if the Knicks think they're going to be doing okay. Plus, he's a point guard only. His stats for this year are going to be 25, 4, and 6. And my last A-minus guy is going to be Darius Garland. Now, his pros are that he's going to get a lot of good assists, he's a reliable stack guy. His problem is that he's never played more than 70 games in the season, he's not really the number one guy, and he's a point guard only. His projections are supposed to be about 21, 3, and 7. To start off my B-plus tier, we have James Harden, who is going to fill up the stats across the board, and he's a point guard and shooting guard. The problem is, he hasn't played more than 70 plus games since the 19th season, and he's a big baby who's always looking to get traded all the time, so he's not really reliable. He's projected to be about 20 points, 6 boards, and 10 assists. Also in B-plus is Cunningham, and he's going to fill up the stats across the board. He's going to have the green light to do whatever he wants in Detroit, plus he's a point guard and shooting guard. Con is that he's going to be sharing the ball with Ivy. He was projected to be about 21, 6, and 5. Drew Holiday is also in the B-plus tier. His stats are reliable. He's a point guard and shooting guard. The problem is that he doesn't play more than 70 games in the season. He's not going to have any crazy stats as well, and now that Middleton is healthy, he's going to take some stats from him. He's projected to be about 19, 5, and 7. Also in my B-plus tier, I have Jamal Murray. 
Now he's a reliable stack guy, he's the number 2 guy in Denver and he's on a fast paced team. He's also a point guard shooting guard. The con is that he's injury prone recently, although he seemed pretty healthy last year. Stats likely won't get much better than what they are right now, which is 22, 4, and 6. And finally in B+, I actually have Josh Giddy. Now the pro is that he's slotted for 4 different positions and he gets great all around stats. Con is that SGA and Chet are healthy and will probably be taking most of the stats from him, and he's not really like an outstanding guy in any one stat. He's projected to be about 17, 8, and 6. Unfortunately, we skip all the way to B- after that one, and to start it off, it's going to be Bradley Beal. The pro is that he's going to be on a fast-paced team, and he's a point guard shooting guard. The con is that he hasn't played more than 70-plus games since the 2019 season, and he's likely going to be the number 3 guy in Phoenix. And I also disagree with his stat projection, which is 23, 4, and 5. Next is Fred Van Vliet, which Yahoo's been having in the second round. I disagree with that. The pro is that his assists are going to be okay, I think, no matter what really happens in Houston. The con is that he hasn't really played more than 70 plus games since 2018, his usage is going to go down than previous years, he's a point guard only, and Houston is rebuilding. I don't know what's going on. He's projected to get about 19, 4, and 6. I disagree with those stats. Up next is Jalen Green, and he's going to be a solid pick, plus he's a point guard shooting guard. McConnell is that Van Vliet is likely going to be taking some touches from him, so I disagree with some of the projections. I think they're going to go down from last year, and he's going to be about 22, 4, and 4. Now we have Maxi, and the pro is that he's been slotted to be the starting shooting guard. He's going to be solid for points and three-pointers and percentage-wise, plus he's a point guard shooting guard. The problem is that his stats are going to be capped as long as Harden is still on the team. He also doesn't provide much outside of points and three-pointers made, and he's projected to be about 22, 3, and 4. My last guy in B- tier is Hero, and he's a great source for three-pointers made, not so much percentages. He's generally reliable with his stats, plus he's a point guard shooting guard. The con is that he's coming off a major injury, and he's a number three guy on the team. Now, if he's traded to Portland, that'll likely take off a little bit better. He's projected to be about 25 and 4. The last guy on my list is a C plus tier, and it's Anthony Simons. He should be the number two, number three guy in this team, and if Lillard goes down, he's going to take right off. Plus, he's reliable, and he's a point guard shooting guard. The con is that Lillard is back and playing, and this is going to hurt his fantasy unless he's traded. He's projected to be about 23 and 4. Now I'm going to rattle off a couple honorable mentions just to make sure you guys are paying attention and you grab them in the later rounds. First is Rogier, point guard shooting guard, decent stats, but he's unreliable and inconsistent. You have McCollum, who's a point guard shooting guard. He would be in my top 25, but it all depends if he's the number 2 guy or he's the number 3, number 4 option on his team due to teammate injuries. Next is Dinwiddie, who's a point guard shooting guard. He's a solid pick and he's likely to be the number 2, number 3 option on the team, but that team is likely looking to go younger at this point. Also, there's CP3, who's just a point guard. He's not who he used to be. He's always hurt. He's number four option on this team at this point. He's going to be a good source of assist, though. Ivy's going to be a point guard shooting guard. He's going to be a likely solid fantasy choice. He could make my list, but he doesn't have great percentages. Jordan Clarkson's a point guard shooting guard. I would like him to be higher, but he's mostly just points, and it depends on the route that Utah wants to go. Fultz is a point guard shooting guard. He would make my list if he wasn't hurt all the time. When he's not hurt, he's a solid 15-5-5 five five guy on a bad night. D'Angelo Russell is a point guard shooting guard, and it depends on what the rest of the team wants to do, but is generally pretty solid. He could be in my top 25 list. And then there's Westbrook, who's a point guard only. He's not what he used to be, and he would be better if he wasn't hurt a lot recently, but Kawhi takes his weekly vacations, and that could help Westbrook. So that's it for my top 25 point guards for fantasy basketball. Hopefully you found it to be useful when you go to make your draft. Look out for the rest of these as I'm going to be breaking down each position before the NBA season starts in a month. Also check out the videos from Kurt, who's been covering the F1 season as it starts to wind down. So plug in that GPS as we look for the next exit.